Hey everyone, how are you today? Today, I'm gonna to read you a story called Once Upon a Dime, A Math Adventure. This is a fun book. It has a lot of play on words. Once Upon a Dime, A Math Adventure by Nancy Kelly Allen. The illustrations are by Adam Doyle. Once Upon a Time, Way back in Birdhaven Hollow, there lived a farmer named Truman Worth. Every day, he worked from sunrise until sundown. He milked the cow, gathered the eggs, fed the pigs, and chased the sheep away from the briar path. He was a friendly sort, so I liked to help him. Even though, even through the coldest winters, the wettest springs, the driest summers, and the windiest autumns, Farmer Worth whistled as he worked. Some days, Miss Nancy True, who lived down the road, would drop by and hum along. With the cow mooing and the chickens clucking and the pigs oinking and the sheep buying, it was sure a symphony of noises. Farmer Worth always said he was as happy as a pig in a puddle. Farmer Worth grew crops just like everybody else in these parts. He grew apples, plain old regular apples. He grew beans, plain old regular beans. All the animals on the farm were just plain old regular animals too. As for the fertilizer, Farmer Worth used only the organic kind. It was completely natural. After the animals provided it and it dried out for about a year, it was good as any chemical fertilizer you could buy, maybe better. Look how they look how the illustrator did these apples. They're green and red. I really like that. I think that's a lot of fun. Only one plant on the whoa, only one plant on the farm was not plain or regular. No one had planted it. It just sprouted up in a place where nothing ever before grew before. When Farmer Worth saw that little wisp of a tree, he scratched his head. How did that happen? He asked his cow. Mooly pitcher? The cow rolled her great brown eyes. Farmer thought, Farmer Worth thought any tree that grew in that spot would surely need some fertilizer. He fetched a bucket of old chicken droppings and dumped it round the little tree. In just one week, the tree was as high as my knees. In two weeks, it was up to my shoulders. In three weeks, it was as tall as Farmer Worth. Soon, little buds appeared, and we watched as buds opened into flowers. In the center of each flower was a penny. That tree grew the most beautiful crop of penny you ever did see. They glinted copper in the sunshine. Well, now, said Farmer Worth. He plucked a penny and polished it on his shirt. A penny for your thoughts he told me. We are rich. We should count it all up, I crowed, as loud as his rooster, Franklin D. Roosterveld. Farmer Worth grinned. Be my guest, he said. He held out a handkerchief, a handful of corn for his chickens, Lewis and Cluck. By the time I finished picking, there were a hundred pennies. Farmer Worth put the pennies in an old pickling jar. Then he gathered up some nails and fixed up the hen house. He had the happiest chickens you ever did see. That fall, we shoveled an old pile of pig squish all around the bottom of that penny tree. The following spring, little silver centers grew in flowers all over the tree. I declare, sang Miss True when she brought us a plate of homemade brownies, your tree is sprouting nickels, Mr. Worth. I call it my piggy bank tree, said Farmer Worth, scratching his pig behind the ears. Dwight D. Winkenhauer grunted happily. I got a pail and picked a hundred nickels. Farmer Worth added up the nickels and put them in the jar with the pennies. To celebrate, he turned on the hose for Dwight D. Winkenhauer, William Mick McKinley, and Dolly Mattisau. 
Those pigs made the ooziest mud hole you ever did see. They are having a good time. That fall, Farmer Worth decided to try sheep biscuits as fertilizer for the tree. The next spring, when buds appeared on the tree, I watched them like a cat at a mouse hole. They were very small when they started to open. These ain't big enough for nickels, Farmer Worth, I said. Aren't big enough, corrected Miss True, who used to be a teacher. But they're worth twice as much, said Farmer Worth. Look closely. These flowers are making dimes. And don't they make the lovely sound, said Miss True. She closed her eyes to listen. The dime pinged and tinged, clinked and plunked, making the tree sound like wind chimes. Folks said you could hear the music all through the hollow. Farmer Worth liked the music so much he didn't pick any of the dimes. After a week or so, they started falling to the ground. I raked them up and counted them. All in all, I poured a hundred dimes into the jar like a silver waterfall. To celebrate, Farmer Worth mixed a tub of sheep dip for Woldrow Wilson, Grover Cleveland Lamb, and Rutherford Bahays, and all the other sheep. It was the bubbly, bubbliest sheep dipping you ever did see. He looked so happy. No, whoops. That fall, we talked about the strange tree a lot. It had grown bigger and would need more fertilizer. Farmer Worth decided to use cow pies. Farmer Worth and I raked in old cow pies as far as the branches of the tree reached. Next spring, the flower buds grew bigger and bigger. When the buds opened, each flower had a shiny new quarter growing in the middle. The heavy quarters made a sound like tiny cowbells. They didn't sound as nice as those dimes, but they sure were worth a lot more. When we were done picking, we had a hundred quarters to add to the jar. I reckon we have a cup of quarters. That's a quarter of a quart of quarters, joked Farmer Worth. I tried to say it three times fast. Farmer Worth patted Molly Pitcher, I'm sorry, Mooley Pitcher, and said, Look what we grew. He then gave Mooley a shiny new cowbell. Now we had used fertilizer from each kind of animal on the farm. Farmer Worth was going to fertilize the tree with the same old cow pies when I had an idea. How about my dad's bull, I asked. Dad would let you use some bull chips. He might, said Farmer Worth, but will the bull? <laughs> well, I thought that bull was pretty friendly, so I paid him a visit. He didn't like me much, but I came home with a whole sack full of bull chips for the tree. The next spring, the tree didn't flower at all. It just made leaves from the barn. It looked like every other tree on the farm. I was as sad as a turkey who lost its gobble. One day, Farmer Worth remarked that the tree looked a little odd. He went over it to it for a closer look. Suddenly, he gave a whoop so loud that Miss True and I came running. What do you think? out those green leaves have George Washington's picture on them. They were one dollar bills. The dollars rustled in the breeze. Farmer Worth, Ms. True, and I had a picnic and a picking party. One hundred crisp dollar bills nested in our basket. That summer, when Farmer Worth visited the zoo, he came home laughing and showed me a sack of Chinese panda patties that he brought back with him. That fall, we worked them into the soil around the tree. In the spring, new green leaves grew all over the tree. Would they be dollar bills or five dollar bills? Maybe even ten dollar bills? 
and went over to check the tree every day. Then something very peculiar happened. The green leaves changed to a beautiful red and white. Look at this, Farmer Worth, I said. It's not real money. Oh, it's real money, all right, explained Farmer Worth. These are real, honest to goodness, goodness yuan, Chinese dollars. And we've got a bumper crop. By now, Farmer Worth had saved up quite a bit of money. He and Miss True got married, filled their pockets with the yuan, and set sail on a slow boat to China for their honeymoon. Farmer Worth left the running of the farm to me. This was my big chance. I had always wondered what would happen if two different kinds of fertilizers, fertilizers were mixed together. Would two kinds of money grow? And if they did, how much? What about pig squish and chicken droppings? After all, ham and eggs go well together. If the tree grew a hundred pennies, then it was fertilized with chicken droppings. And a hundred nickels, when it was fertilized with pig squish, then what would it grow with both? The next spring, I was hoping for hundreds of pennies and nickels, but the tree grew only 50 of each. I figured out how much money that added up to and put the coins in the jar. But I was, but I was really disappointed. Well, I wonder why. The next fall, Franklin D. Roosevelt marched around the cow as if he were trying to tell me something, so I fertilized the tree with chicken droppings and cow pies. In the spring, the tree grew 75 quarters and 75 pennies. I was happy as a chicken in a wagon full of corn until I added it all up, and it was not as much as I thought. The next fall, I decided to use cow pies because there were so many of them. What would be the best thing to mix with them? That day, as I walked past the bull, I had an idea. Of course, I shouted. What that tree needs are cow pies and bull chips. Cows and bulls are the biggest animal around, after all. Next spring, the tree grew a hundred quarters and a hundred dollar bills. I couldn't wait to show Farmer Worth. The very day Farmer, that very day Farmer Worth returned from China, we all rushed out to meet him. The chickens clocked a melody and the pigs oinked in harmony. The sheep bleated a greeting and the cow mooed, Hello! It was the most joyful homecoming you ever did see. I told Farmer Worth all about my fertilizer, mixing experiments, I reckon we should use even bigger animals. Now I finished. Elephant mounds might be the very <laughs> thing. Farmer Worth thanked me and told me what a great job I'd done on the farm. That evening, Miss Nancy True, I, I mean Miss Nancy Worth, remarked how much I'd grown while they were gone. Together, they told me about their trip and showed me pictures of China. That night, they decided that they wanted to go back to fertilizing the tree with sheep biscuits. The money's not all that important, they said, and nothing we saw or heard in our travels could equal the music of the dimes. The next year, when spring came, the sweet music of the dime tree could be heard where, whenever a breeze blew. The dimes pinged and tinged, clinked and clinked. Folks said you could hear the music all through the hollow. I had to admit, that I missed the sound too. After that, nothing strange happened in Birdhaven Hollow for a long, long time. That is, until the day when we all found out that little Annie True Worth liked eating her alphabet cereal outdoors. The tree is growing books. The end. Once upon